right, so now we're gonna get started on the staining process. Now, when we're looking at this whole idea of the staining process, we're gonna end up lo looking at simple stains versus some of the differential stains. So with the simple stain, this is where we're gonna end up using just one stain. The point of a simple stain is to allow us to visualize the morphology of the bacteria as well as a little bit of its structure. It's not gonna let us differentiate one type of bacteria from another based on like chemical components, except for just the shape. It's gonna let us be able to see if it's cockeyed, so it's the round shape, if it's bacillus like a rod, or if it's got that spirillium structure where it's a spiral. That's what a simple stain is gonna allow us to do. A differential stain is going to use a series of stains. Normally there's gonna be two stains, but there's gonna be multiple steps involved in the process of staining. This is going to allow us to see differences. And most of the time, the differences in a differential stain is gonna be based on the type of cell wall present. There are lots of different differential stains, but we're gonna look at two. One is gonna be the gram stain. When we look at gram stain, whether it's a gram positive or gram negative bacteria, it's based on the composition of the cell wall, specifically the layer of peptidoglycan that's present. If there's a thick layer of peptidoglycan, it's gonna hold the first stain, which is called crystal violet, and that's going to be gram positive. On the other hand, if it has a thin layer of the peptidoglycan, we're going to see that the counter stain, the safranin, is what's going to be held, and that's going to allow us to see that it is gram negative, and it has the thinner layer of peptidoglycan. All right, so that's one reason we use a gram stain. This allows us to see if it's gram positive versus it's gram if it's gram negative. Another type of differential stain is called an acid fast staining. This type of stain is really important for bacteria that have like a waxy type of cell wall, it means they have a myclonic acid that's present, so it has a more lipid layer, that's what the wax or fat is on it. This does not gram stain well, and so because of this acid fast staining is a way to be able to visualize those cells a little bit better. All right, and so this acid fast, again, though, is a differential stain because we're gonna use several stains as well as several steps in order to achieve the end result. All right, so I'm gonna show you the steps that go along with each of these types of staining and again, review what they are used for. Now, there are also some special stains that are talked about in your labs. So there are some special stains that are do done and we're not gonna do that in the lab um, today, but those special stains are going to be looking for special structures. And so we have what we call negative staining. Negative staining is used specifically to see if a bacteria has a capsule around it. So it's specifically going to be for a capsule. We also have endospore staining. Endospore staining is going to look for the types of bacteria that can create endospores. Now, endospores help the bacteria be able to lay dormant for a long period of time if conditions are not favorable for it to grow. There's also a flagella staining. This is gonna look for flagella type structures that are on the bacteria, again, helpful for movement. So these are types of stains that are specifically used for looking for specific structures. Now, a lot of these structures help the bacteria be more virulent, meaning it's going to cause more issues for you as a host, being able to make it where it's harder for your immune system to get rid of it or to identify it. These are things that are going to help the bacteria be more successful. All right, so when we're looking at staining, there's different types, and I have a lot of the staining stuff here, but I'm going to do a couple of short videos explaining the different types. Now, I have things set up, so I have my staining station, so I have a little staining rack that's gonna go across the sink here. Um, I'm gonna use the sink, and I'm gonna let water run kind of continuously as we go through this process. Um, I'll probably do a voiceover so that you don't hear all of that water as we go through and look at the different steps. I also have my slides that are here. I have bibulous paper. Bibulous paper is how we're gonna dry off the slide when we're done with the staining process. And I also have my clothespin, that's why it has this color to it, to help me be able to transfer so I don't get stain all over my hands. All right, so the stain we're going to look at first is a simple stain, and this is where we're gonna use one type of dye or stain. We could use crystal violet. Crystal violet's a pretty good one to use for that. 
Um, we see that here, the Scrams Crystal Violet. Um, but in this particular case, I'm going to use the methylene blue. Okay, so I'm gonna use the methylene blue. This is gonna make it where the cells are gonna appear blue underneath the scope, okay? All right, so here's a simple stain. I placed my slide on the staining rack. We're gonna use the methylene blue here. We're gonna take this particular dye and we are gonna do what we call flooding the slide. So we're going to flood the slide in order to make sure that our whole smear is covered with the stain. Once this has been completed, we need to allow this to sit for approximately a minute. Okay, so approximately 60 seconds, allowing the stain to be able to be taken in by the bacteria. Now remember, this is a simple stain where we're only gonna be using the one stain. This is gonna allow us to see cellular morphology. In other words, we're gonna be able to see if it's a caucus bacteria, meaning that it's circular around, bacillus where it's rod, or spirillium where it has that spiral type shape. Now we are going to use these slides on the microscope and so with that remember how to use the microscope so we don't break our slides here. Also we want to make sure that we understand the magnification as we go from low power to oil. Okay making sure we understand that. Now after this has been here about a minute we're going to rinse off the excessive dye. We're going to let it just go down the sink and we're going to rinse it until there's no more dye that is present on the slide. Now remember, this is a cooled heat fix smear. This means that it is going to have the bacteria fixed to the actual slide so it should not come off when we just put running water on it. Now we want to dry the slide and we're going to use the Biblius paper. We're going to put the slide in there and we're going to kind of pat. Be careful how much pressure you put here because it is a glass slide and it could break. We're then going to move it to a dry area and we're going to pat it again. Remember, we don't want to rub it because we don't want to rub our smear away, but we do want to make sure that we dry the slide. Once the slide's dry, you're gonna notice that the smear has a coloration to it. In this case, it's a very kind of pale type blue, and that's why these cells are gonna appear blue underneath the microscope. If you have any questions about the simple staining process, please let me know.